Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, I have nine JavaScript tips. They are one-liner tips and you might use them on every JavaScript project. So in this video, I will put them in a real-world example and I will explain how it works. So let's check it out on the code here. This is the list that I have and now I am going to use each of them in the browser and you will see how they work. So number one is copy text to clipboard. You might have seen this example a lot, like a lot of people try to copy coupon uh, with a button. So if you want to do that, you can use this uh, navigator clipboard write text function. So if you write this function in your JavaScript application, all you have to do is use this copy text to clipboard. Something like this. Now, if I want to use this in this example, I'm going to select all the H2 and paragraph on this website. And then if someone click on them, I want to copy the text in the clipboard. So first of all, let's say document dot query selector all. I know query selector all is not very useful to use in every case, but in this scenario, this is just an example. I'm going to select H2 and paragraph. I know a lot of H2 and paragraph in this page exist. So for each of those, I am going to run this loop and let's call this function. I am going to use arrow function and let's close it. So for each of them, we call them EL or element, something like this. And inside of this, let's, uh, let's add a click event listener for each of them. So EL dot add event listener and the event listener will be click. And again, we can call a function. Again, in here, instead of writing function word, we can use this arrow function, which is much simple. And let's close it. Again, this function will act, uh, we are going to pass the event parameter so we can take the text of the clicked event. In here, we are going to uh, use the copy text to clipboard function. And inside of this, we are going to run e dot target dot inner text. So anyone who click on this, it is going to grab the text, put it in the clipper. If I have uh, written everything correctly, it should work just fine, except for this at even uh, listener, which is fine, I think. Now, if I run my code, nothing has changed. So if I click on this H2 and let's paste it in here. Now you can see it for it copied that. Let's click on this paragraph and now it should copy that paragraph too. I think this is the paragraph. Okay, this one might not be a paragraph, but if I scroll down, clicking on this, yeah, this is a paragraph. And this is how it works. Easily, you can use this copy text to clipboard. The next example is a document hidden. So you can use document.hidden to specify if user is in this tab or not. So if user is uh, doing some activity in other tab, it will return false. So why it is useful? You might have seen some websites where they have a countdown. You click on the download and then they have, okay, after 20 seconds, the down, you can, uh, you, ha you can have access to the download link. What they do is they check you should uh, be on that website for 20 seconds. So they display some ads so you can view the ads. They can earn some money, right? On those websites, if you go to another tab, it will not be counted as 20 second waiting time. So that's why they can use this uh, document that hidden to specify if you are in this tab or not. To check how it works, um, let's give you uh, also an example. In here, we are going to check every second if user is here or not. So we can use this set interval. Um, again, I'm going to use the arrow function. So uh, what we are going to do is after each second, we are going to run this function, right? So this is how it works. Now inside of this, we can just console.log is active. Okay, in here, let's uh, write our code. What was the code? We can say is tab view, something like this is equal to not document. So before running that code, let's add this code in our um, console element. For now, if I run this, it should be fine. Now I can bring back my previous code so I can run this. Now inside of this, I have to have 
closing this and let's run our function in here is tab in view and since this is a function we can call it now if i run this every second it is checking okay is active true right now let's go to the this tab now you can see every second is checking but if i go here i will wait a few seconds maybe i have some activity on other tabs if i go back you can see it return false also four times which took four seconds i was in this tab and if i go back to this tab again this is returning false in here so to avoid this uh, re from repeating i'm going to refresh my page and everything should be clear now that is how you can specify if user is in your tab or not what else you can see you can use this scroll to view to scroll to a uh, view position for example i am in this uh, let's say i pick this part of the website if i am in this position and i want to scroll to that position you can use scroll into view which is very useful if i since i selected that part i can use dollar sign zero to grab that part and say scroll into view if you call this function it has some parameters also which use a smooth scrolling but since this website have a smooth scrolling with css i don't have to do that if i run this it will take me to this page and another example is if you want to have an element for example this is the hero of the website and instead of this class if i add an id in here call hero this has an id right now in here let's say you are at the bottom of the page you want the user to scroll to that position or on the in the hero you can say document dot get element by id it was hero and now you will use this scroll into view something like this now if i run this code it should take me to the hero which is this id in real world example you know which part of the code you want to scroll to but scroll into view is very handy next up you have this uh, function to find out if it is a weekend so if you want to make your website go offline on weekends or if you have a part of the website for example the contact page and you want to bring it offline on the weekends so you can find out if it is weekend or not so this function is weekend uh, we accept a date in here we are going to pass uh, from one to six as an array in here and we are specifying the index of the the date that we specify if it is not minus zero means it is not a weekend so how do we use this for example we have a variable called um, today and it is equal to new date so if you use like run today it is 12th of april and now if you pass this in is week today it is going to return false because today is not a weekend so that is how you can specify the weekend and you know where you can use it so let's check out the other example uh, how you will uh, filter an array and find out which one and filter and remove all the a null or undefined value from an array for example you have this array in here uh, called groceries if you want to filter and get only the value that are not null or undefined it is really easy let's create a variable and call it available is equal to groceries dot filter and inside this you will run boolean now you will pass boolean in this filter and it is going to return only the products that are available the, the the data that are available that are not null or undefined so this is useful even if you have object like an array of objects and you want to return only the ones that are not null or undefined so if you run this and let's check the available it has only the available apple milk and bread so that is another example that's useful you might use in your project and also array dot is array if you have an object for example or you have data that's coming from another source you want to check if that is array or not you can use this uh, array dot is array function uh, it will just accept an argument and if that is an array it is going to give you a uh, true if there is not an array it will be false for example if i run this hello inside of this it is going to return false because hello is not an array it is a string so if you want to pass an array it is going to return true so that is how you can specify if the data you have is an array or not next up you have big numbers so this is useful i i know you might know this but it is also uh, 
something you have to know you can like uh, write a variable name using underscore so in this example that i have in here if you have a big number just uh, write something like this instead of having comma or dots you can use underscore now if you run this let's uh, let's see what is this big number now it is a correct number it's like the same way that you put underscore it will be removed if you use this underscore this is only in javascript and it is really useful so next up we have this merging and how you can merge two objects together so in my code editor let me refresh so we clear everything and we are having this object one and object two if you want to combine them together you can use uh, this technique so you can let's say let's create another object called object three so the object three will be combination of object one and object two you will add your object in here and using these dot spreads you can write literally object one and object two in here so you can say object one and comma dots object two now your object three will be combination of both of these uh, values oops i forgot to assign it to the object three something like this so now if you run this object three it is going to have both combination of object one and object two that is also very useful if you want to uh, combine these two together and next up we have this toggle the value of uh, a boolean uh, the reason it is very important is we use them a lot in javascript for example you have a, a list of variable called open and the open is currently equal to true if you want to make this false you can say okay open is false but if you want to toggle it if it is true make it false if it is false make it true this is how you can say open is equal to not open something like this and this is how you toggle now if you run this it is false now if you run it again it will become true so that is how you can toggle the value these are some javascript uh, one-liner tips that might help you in your next project i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video